So here we are at MSC, and this is the uh, company in Calgary that uh, installed the radar jammer and the um, uh, audio system upgrade. So because I kind of don't know how it works, um, I thought I would stop by here and get one of the guys to do a brief tutorial on what exactly was installed on this car. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea of, uh, of the benefits uh, benefits uh, from it. Okay, so let's just see if anybody is available to talk to us. All right, and we'll take you inside the showroom, which is just off uh, Barlow Trail and what, 50th uh, Southeast in Calgary. Nice shiny new Lamborghini. And this is, this is a plug for my friend Larry who runs this shop. Anyway, he sells nice stuff. I've been dealing with him for 15 years, and uh, I sent him all my Porsche business when I was uh, sales manager of the dealership in Calgary. So here are some of the products. And I think virtually everybody um, who has a high-end car and wants work uh, comes here when they want a sound upgrade or um, uh, radar detectors or jammers. Okay, so we've got Chris here from Mobile Solutions. He did the install on the RS6, or at least most of it. So can you just tell us, let's go to the car, but can you just tell us like what it is you put on and what it does? Yeah, so the RS6, the uh, owner of it was extremely happy with the car itself, but had a couple things that he was looking for. Uh, first was a better audio experience. So if we wanted to do something that was going to enhance the listening experience to match the level of the rest of the car yeah. without compromising the rest of the car. So everything yeah. that we had done was integrated in from a standpoint of what would OE, OEM have done, what would Audi have done in this case if they were looking to really scale up that performance, you know, the RS package for the audio system. So in this case, we upgraded the factory amplifier to a Helix V12, a 12-channel amplifier that runs the speakers throughout the cabin. So what does what does the upgraded amp do for you? Like So the upgraded amplifier scales up power, so we've got a little bit more output, but more importantly, gave us a lot more control. So when it came to things like making sure the system sounds like real music, not just a bunch of noise inside the car, We've got all the tools built into this amplifier to correct the listening environment and give us something that's extremely natural. So do you natural do you do you set that? Do you program it? Yep, do, does it all, do it itself? No, nope, it... that's all programmed at our level. So it allows us to tailor the entire audio system in the vehicle to exactly what the client was looking for in here. So when we go through that process, we actually tailor it to a uh, we'll call a universal uh, target. So something that's going to appeal to ninety percent of listeners out there. All right. But also bring some extra. So, like, into the let's mix. say the next guy wants to listen to like, oh, I don't know, classical music, and the guy before him was into like hard rock or something like that. Do you, do you go back in and retune it, or do you? There can be some slight tailoring that's done for it, but the system itself is designed to accurately reproduce what's on the recording. So it doesn't okay. matter if you've got classic rock, if you've got classical music, if you're blues, if you're jazz, if you're country, or any step in between, or if you're like me and it's all of it. This is a yeah, cater okay. and deliver on all and that stuff. In terms of like numbers, what would it have started with and what did it end with then? Uh, in terms of power, uh, these factory systems are rated at about uh, between 900 and 1,000 watts of power total. Yeah. Uh, in this system from Audi, uh, our package is now running at about 1,800 watts. So almost double the power, but like all I right. said, more importantly than the power, it's the control and the experience that's delivered in there. All right, and then, and then, this, and then that piece lives under here. The... Uh, yeah, so everything is tucked down in behind all the factory trim panels, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So this is the amplification here for it. So yeah. this receives a digital signal from Audi system and then allows us to output that to all the existing speakers in the car with all of that new control ad added into the mix. On the underside is also a second amplifier that runs our subwoofer system. So okay. the Audi system is factory one is tucked away. Again, this client was looking for a little bit more fun factor in here to fill in the bottom end of kick drums and bass guitars and yeah. cellos and all of that kind of stuff. So that's where up on the side here, 
into this factory cubby, we've actually built. Oh, that's the enclosure. second. That, so that that was a cubby before, and now it's an enclosure. Exactly. So this is a fiberglass molded enclosure, uh, vinyl wrap to give us uh, a nice high end fit and finish to it, and it's also got the pressed metal mesh grill. So even when you're using this car for what it's designed for, using this hatch space for everyday life, the equipment is never compromised. So, Everything stays protected. So how do you make a, me a mesh? custom mesh grill so with these we actually go through uh, so the outside pieces here these are fiberglass molded to the car to give us the shape they're hand shaped to so give create, us the contours you create a mold and actually lay up a fiberglass correct oh and then wrap it with vinyl yep exactly and then on the inside this first little edge here we've got a laser cut piece that's molded to the vehicle push itself. <laughs> okay well that works <laughs> We've got this laser cut piece around the outside to give us a nice little trim, a clean edge around the outside. And then we've got a metal mesh that we go through and cut. And then we actually put a press on here as well to give it some three-dimensional shape to tie in with a lot of the other grill cues throughout the vehicle itself. So it's got this little wow. three-dimensional line in there, just elevating the fit and finish again to match the other things that Audi has done to really give a premium ownership right, experience. So that, I mean, that looks like an OEM installation. That's, I guess that's the difference. Okay, so did you take out any Audi parts? The only thing that came out, the factory amplifier and the factory subwoofer, knowing that we were upgrading these, the factory subwoofer was replaced with uh, where our amplifiers and all that kind of stuff go down on the floor. But other than that, everything else through the vehicle is okay. exactly and the same. where was the factory stuff located? Everything down underneath the floor in here. But in the same place as this? Yep. So originally when the car was new, you had an amplifier down there. Yeah, so amplifier is buried up towards the front end of it, uh, okay. kind of right up against the back seats, and then the subwoofer lived down in the floor area here. So okay. that comes out, frees up the space for our new equipment, so no compromise in. to storage. Okay, and so okay, so that's the only th those are the only pieces that were removed and they're replaced by these higher end pieces. Okay, and the the rest of the Bang and Olufsen sound system and all that the. The controls, all that's unaffected? All, so, all you did is you just boosted the power. Exactly. All the OEM controls in the factory radio, things like balance controls, tone, uh, bass and treble, all that kind of stuff are still intact as they were. All the new signal processing, so the surround effects and that kind of stuff are new, now handled in the new amplifier. So they are still in the radio, but are effectively disabled because we've got better processing available here. But all of the speakers, all the grills, the factory controls for volume and on the steering wheel, all those remain intact as Audi intended. All right. Okay. So that sounds good. Um, that's, I, I, I mean, I think that's pretty impressive work. Um, that looks, I mean, that looks nice. I mean, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look aftermarket and I understand you, you trace all the factory, um, uh, routing for all the wiring looms and use the same grommet. Did you, you're not drilling any holes in firewalls or? Correct, all these OEM manufacturers, they've got to get their wires through. So they've already got channels built, they've got yeah. holes through the run through grommets. So everything is following those same channels, those same wire runs up through the car, the yeah. same holes through the firewall. Everything is done exactly as Audi would have done it in the first place without okay. compromise. So you're not coring holes through structural pieces. Correct. Okay. okay, so that's the, um, the, out, the audio system in the car which I think we have a handle on. And, um, but let's, let's talk about the radar laser jammer system now. So this car was outfitted with a complete Stinger Extreme system. That gives us both radar detection and laser protection. So across the front of the vehicle, in behind the bumper, is our radar antenna oh, that cool. will give us the ability to pick up signals from a variety of sources. Okay, so um, let's talk about the radar. Where is the radar detector in this car? So the radar antenna is actually tucked in behind the body line on the bumper here. So basically kind of straight back yeah. in there. Keeps everything out of sight, out of mind, as well as protected. Yeah. Uh, gives us detection with all modern radar guns compatible with K and KA bands. So everything you could be looking for. Uh, AI based uh, learning platform on this. So when it comes to filtering technologies, getting rid of false alerts and zeroing in on the real threats. There's really not a whole lot out there that can match this. Okay, so a state-of-the-art system. Now, if people need a manual, can they go like online and get the manual? Yep, how do absolutely. they figure out how to work it? Yeah, so stingerradar.com has all of that kind of stuff available for it. You can also reach out to us uh, through our website, msc-america.com. Uh, you okay. can reach out to our team, and of course, we can supply manuals and guides and that kind of stuff. So as well. if, if somebody buys the car, you get a phone call, and they'll, you'll tell them how to work it? We can walk them through every step of everything that we did in here. All right, all right, you're willing to do that. Now, what about the jammer? Where does that all, 
how does that all work? So the laser is a much more interesting technology than the radar side. It's pinpoint accurate, it's lightning fast, so we have to be extremely careful when it comes to dealing with those signals. One of the things, because of the focus level of the laser signals, we have to make sure we've got good coverage across the front of the car. So this system actually uses three sets of laser jammers. The first is a small pair just up in the corner here. So we can see just these little fiber optic tips. There's one there, which is a transmitter. And there's another one here, which is the receiver. So that's what sees the laser signal come in. The transmitter is what fires back to buy some reactionary time and get on the binders and get down to that socially acceptable speed. So how do they, how do the points of light intersect then so it knows what's going on? So it's looking for a signal coming from the police's laser gun at the car. The receiver sees that signal. The brain inside the vehicle, which is buried up underneath the dash, processes and relays back a signal to allow you some time to react to, uh, to targeting. So what kind of distance does it operate at? Uh, so this system tested, all systems are, of ours are verified at the time of installation. This is a jam to gun performance. So uh, all the way down to effectively zero meters. Uh, typical target range for an officer on the outside of things is somewhere between 1,000 to 1,200 feet average uh, with a general max of about 1,500 feet. And this will jam across the board. All right. So there's three sets of these sensors on here. The first set is on the outside edge here. There's a matching set on the yeah. passenger side as well. Yeah. And then we've also got a centralized set just below the Audi logo here. So no matter where this vehicle is targeted, whether it be driver's side, passenger side, or center mass, all three target areas are protected. And that's fiber optic? That's fiber optic, yes. Oh, wow. And, and so... So you just drilled a little hole in, in this yep. and poke the fiber optic through it? Yep, and then we secure to the back side, uh, build a little mount for it to hold everything in place to keep it level and stable, and you're off and running. Um, I mean, let's say you're on the, the school run and you're in traffic and there's no chance that you're going to get, you know, go over 30 kilometers an hour and you don't want the thing beeping at you. Yep. How do you, can you just you turn it off easily? Yep, absolutely. Inside the cabin is the controller for it. It gives you access to instantaneous volume control. You've got mute functions there. But this system can also be programmed to not alert below certain speed thresholds. So you can program that to anything in about 10 mile an hour or 10 kilometer an hour, depending on your settings, uh, those increments. So you can program the system. So don't tell me about anything of below okay, okay. 40 kilometers an hour. So maybe show me where the controller is here then. I know we've got something built in there. Yep, so this guy right here. Yeah. So okay. just below the cluster. Yeah. So that acts as the controller there for it. Okay. So across the top is an LED strip that lights yeah. up. It'll yeah. be green to let you know that the system is online and active. Yeah. As soon as there's an alert, radar or laser, it actually starts to flash red to let you know visually that something's happening. And then yeah. there's an audible warning that comes through the system so, to tell you exactly what you're doing. So how do you turn it off? I, like so no... by simply, so this is actually a three position touchpad. Oh, left, okay. center, and right. Oh, okay. Left and right sides act as volume. The middle is a menu button, or if you press and oh. hold, it will actually power the system down completely should you wish to. Oh, I didn't realize it was a button. <laughs> I was looking at it thinking, okay, what do I, what do, I do? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beauty behind this. Okay. Is it gives you something that fits and suits the car and looks like it belongs in here without... Yeah, like I said, it. everything you... Well, and that's why I've sent you business for 15 years is because... I never get any problems and <laughs> it always looks, it always looks, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. For us, peel and stick is not a, not an installation yeah. type we support. What would the manufacturer have done with anything that we do? And that doesn't matter if it's the radar, the audio, anything else. Uh, no compromise is the only way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I get it. It's, uh, it's all done right. It's all expensive. It all works. Um, so you've been really helpful. I appreciate you just doing this our pleasure as i just dropped in without phoning or anything <laughs> and you managed to drop what you were doing and do this for me so i, I do appreciate that thank you chris no from pleasure. uh from msc in calgary uh, first class first class business i've enjoyed working with them for like i said 15 years thank thanks you.